Is this Miley Cyrus? Yes. Hey. Hey. You're on the air with John Jane Rich. Well, well, well. If it isn't our friend Miley Cyrus, <laughs> presenter at the Academy Awards. Oh, I'm so fancy. Yes, you are. <laughs> hey, did you hear, and we have to, did you hear what our producer did yesterday? No. Canceled their interview with you? Well, at least I called back, and I won't get fired. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it, I mean, the guy's like, it's like, hey, Miley Cyrus is calling in tomorrow. We're like, oh, right on. That's huge. And all of a sudden, he was like, yeah, we, we, I, we couldn't move some stuff around, so I canceled it. I said, are you out of your oh. mind? It's oh. Miley. She's got possibly the, I, I got to imagine that you were more excited about this movie coming out than any of your incredible feats that have happened before, because this is something that, that you sort of engineered this project, right? Yeah, uh, my mom was the exec producer because she, um, she's always been a huge fan of Nicholas Sparks, so she kind of got a hold of this script, and they kind of started talking and kind of picturing me in it, and so I'm, like, super lucky um, that, you know, everyone that was a part of it, you know, like, cared so much about it. It had a special place in their heart, so that was cool. So hey, this is the dude that did the notebook, right? Yeah, it's that dude. And so did he, it, it, the way I heard the story is, like, you saw him, you met him, and you said, I want to do, I want to do something. And he's like, well, I don't have anything yet. And then he wrote okay. this. You know, how the, you know how stories get, like, translated so many times that even you forget how it happened? Yeah. yeah. That happened to me. <laughs> so many people have been like, well, Miley met Nick. And then some people are like, well, Nicholas wrote this. And now I'm like, I don't even know. I don't even know if I've ever <laughs> met Nicholas in my life now. I don't even know who Nicholas is. So I'm, like, got- I'm so confused. I don't even know the notebook. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> they call the, the notebook. I've never seen it. No. No, I've never really seen it. But I just remember him coming over to the house and, like, reading it to us. Like, by, like we were all had, like, the camp, uh, like the fire going, the fireplace, and, like, having dinner. And then he, like, told it. And it was, like, a cool story. And somewhere along the lines, I got cast. <laughs> Hey, by the way, so I was I was kind of uh, making fun of you the other day because of the Oscars. Rude. Well, he, well let me <laughs> tell you what rude. happened. So you come out in the Oscars with that Amanda Siegfried girl, right? And and uh, you you come out and you flub your lines, right? You know how you flub your lines? Yeah. And then you go, you said, oh, sorry, uh, we're both kind of nervous. Why don't we play it for Miley so she can relive the moment for a right, second. Listen. They won not just for writing a great song, but for writing a great song specifically for a motion picture to serve a, spe- a specific function in the movie. We're both kind of nervous. <laughs> it's our first time on this stage. Let's just look at mm-hmm. how these songs were used in those movies. Wait, wait, can I tell you? Can I tell you something? She was more nervous than I was. She's the one that got me freaked out. She was back there going, the revolver. What if your dress gets caught in the revolver? What if you fall down the stairs? What if our dress becomes one? And then Adam Shankman's like, oh, don't forget to add personality to it. And, uh, and I, I'm like, you know, you knowing me, I'm going to, like, flood the lines and be like, oh, well, my movie comes out this. Go see it. You know, try to freaking get, like, a plug in there. Uh, so uh, that's just my personality. But, um, but, yeah, we were both so nervous. And I wasn't even nervous until she was the one freaking me out. Yeah, but as a viewer, I didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, I got you throwing her under the bus. You're like, sorry, we're both really nervous. And she's like, well, I didn't screw up my lines. As a viewer, you should have thought so much into it. You should have just laughed and said, oh, how cute. Her first time at the Oscars. It's adorable. <laughs> how cute. She's I tried to get the whole backstory. <laughs> Here, how cute. Here's Miley Cyrus, one of the biggest stars in the world, and this girl just did her first little movie, and you're, and you're like, we're both really nervous. Yeah, you're throwing the ABBA chick under the bus. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so um, would it be fair to say that we inspired you to cover the Poison song, Every Rose Has Its Sword, since it happened right here in our studio for the first time? Um, fine, I'll give it to you. Thank I'll you. give it to you so you guys will stop yelling at me about throwing the other chick underneath the bus. I'll give it to you. Miley, so a year ago, you were in the studio, a year ago, okay? We went and we went to that other little part of the building here and we were just hanging out. We started playing. The Rich was playing the guitar. I started singing Every Rose Has Its Thorn. You jumped in with me singing okay. it. Okay. I'll and, let you guys have it. Yes, you guys inspired me. And you said, oh, my God, I love that song. And then you started singing along <laughs> Every Rose Has Its Thorn. 
My favorite thing of all history is when people re- redo my voice, like reenact my voice. <laughs> I get so many different versions. How I do? That one's good. Thank you. <laughs> I come from a, a long line of uh, Texas blood, so I feel like it, I can assimilate. By the way, the, the previews for this movie, the first time I saw it was during the Oscars, the previews for it. Um, and I, 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 that's perfect casting for Greg Kinnear. Uh, was he play your dad? Yeah, Greg is so cool. He's like, honestly, he's now the standard of, act, like, the high standard of actors that I want to work with. Like, he kind of set the bar for everyone because he was so awesome to work with and, like, so funny and brought, like, so, so much joy to the set. And, um... He, he's probably the weirdest guy I've ever met in my life, but weird I love him so much, and I felt like he's, he's just, honestly, he, like, is so weird, like, it's funny, when it's his shots, he is, like, so method, it's, like, ridiculous, like, he is my dad, and he is, like, dying, and he is this, Matt, and, and then when it's our shots, he's, like, back behind the thing, like, making jokes, and, like, making the, doing the weirdest stuff, like, he's just so funny, he's so much fun to work with, but, like, He's definitely strange. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't know that the the dad dies in the movie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my god! I can't see that. I'm I don't want to see. I can't he, see how that. does how does he die? Does he have cancer? How does Greg Kinnear die? No, I didn't say he died. I said he's dying. Oh uh, well, is there some kind of miraculous cure? Because the Notebook would never end that way. Well, you better go see it. They they died in the Notebook. What are you talking about? Yeah, at the end they died in the Notebook. <laughs> they died. At, 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 yeah, that's right. Huh? Is this is this movie a love story? But and but it's also about a father daughter relationship, and the dad dies at the end, and it, and you have to have an emo. Do you, let me ask you this: Do you have an emotional br- crying scene in this movie? I have an emotional meltdown. <laughs> really? Can you, is, are you that good of an actress? Like, can you just do it right now? Like, cry, cry, Miley, oh. cry, cry. You're gonna have to go see it. Mm. Cry, Miley. Do you know what I mean? That's like plugging. You have to go see it to make um, it. I get it. And, you know, um, we're always campaigning, too, much like you're always plugging. Would it be cool yeah. if you reshoot the ending scene of the movie where you're crying and you give us a little mention? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my I God. wish my uh, dad's dying. I wish I could be listening to John Jane Rich right now. And then that's just part of the movie. How about well, how about you play my dad? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> and you're dying. And I'm like, you can't die. Then I can't listen to John Jay and Rich. <laughs> Oh, Miley, you're awesome, man. I, I'm glad you called in. I got to tell you, we were so distraught yesterday because our producer, we just hired this guy from Florida, and it's like Miley Cyrus is calling in, and then next thing you know, he's like, hey, we, I didn't have, we couldn't fit Miley in anywhere, so we canceled her. I was like, are you kidding me? You Miley, make room for really? Miley. We talk to Miley. Anytime she calls in, we talk to Miley. Yeah, they were ripping him a new one. I mean, to shreds on his birthday even. I mean, he was like crumbling at the seams. The poor guy. Maybe. Should we fire him? It's up to you. Miley can save or... or... I, I'll save his job. No, uh, well, here's what we're going to do. When the movie comes out, we are going to have him actually for real life die the way Greg Kinnear dies in the movie. <laughs> <He's> John Jay. <laughs> Whatever Greg Kinnear die, whatever Greg Kinnear has, we want Bill to get in real life. Well, I actually poisoned my father in the film, so you're gonna have to poison. Oh my God! So you're just like Drew Barrymore in Poison <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> That's kidding. Miley, hold on. We're gonna play your song. Come back, and get more dish. Hear about the movie. Hear about your boy. Hear about music. Hear about you. Hear about your dad. Hear about your hair. Hear about your necklace.